Hey everyone, Father Mark here. Just wanted to roll into your lives and give you another update on things happening here in the parish during the pandemic. Um, it's been a while since I gave you last update. Um, we didn't do one in September. And the only reason I can think of why that didn't happen is because I don't know where September went to. It just like flew by. I'm still kind of stunned that we're into October already. It certainly doesn't feel like it, but here we are. So in September, we did not do a financial update on August, which was okay um, because now that we're into October, I can update you on September. But first, this just in, uh, I received today, someone forwarded to me another email scam. So in my name, someone is emailing out again, looking for help. The, uh, the, the text of the email says, hi, how are you? Question mark. I need your help. Question mark. Please let me know if you get this piece, Father Mark Wiesner. And yes, they spell my name correctly, so I give them the credit for that. Uh, the return address is mark.catholicsofpleasant at gmail.com. Please know this is not me. Every word is capitalized in this. This is not me looking for your help at all. Um, I would never email you except from uh, the Father Mark at catholicsofpleasant.org um, address. And as I say to people, if you have some need to bring me gift cards or checks or cash. I'm here at the rectory. Feel free to swing by and drop them off. But please don't, don't fall for this stuff at all. So I just want to let you know about that. So um, financially, where are we at now as a parish now that we're like seven months into shelter in place? I'll be real honest with you. Um, August was a bit of a problem. August was the first month during shelter in place, I believe the first month, when we actually were um, under budget in terms of our hoped for plate income in our collection. It was less than we had hoped for, but fear not because September more than made up for it. Uh, the numbers for September are really, really wonderful. Um, our plate collection for the month of September was over by 13%, uh, almost, well, $14,500 more than we'd hoped to collect, which means for the year, year to date, we're over by 4%, which is awesome. So who cares about what happened in August? We're looking really, really good. Thank you guys so very, very much. As a matter of fact, as you may be aware that starting in, I think it was April 1, um, March, April 1, May 1, our, uh, our staff took a 20% reduction in pay. And you guys have been so generous that as of October 1, we were able to change that. It's not only a 10% reduction in pay. So we're all very grateful to you for your stewardship to the parish. Again, thank you so very, very much for that. Um, it really speaks volumes of your care and concern during this difficult time. So we're very grateful for that. So thank you for that. Again, 13% over, over for the month of September, uh, $14,651 more than we expected to collect for that month. So we're very, very grateful to you. Other things happening because there is other stuff going on. Of course, as you are aware, we've been replacing the sky at St. Elizabeth Seton. That is underway. Um, it turns out there are two of the panels that were mismeasured or made incorrectly size-wise. So those are getting redone. They're going to slow us up a couple weeks, but we still are looking at getting done ahead of schedule and under budget even. But I wanted to show you a picture that I took um, just on Monday when I came out of Seton. So you can see what's going on here. You can see the, the workmen doing the work. This section down here over the main sanctuary of the church. Um, that's the new skylight that's happening there. You can see that. This is open skylight. And this section right here, that kind of, I thought it was um, like construction. It was just wood covering it, protecting it. Actually, that's the old skylight still in place. So you can see uh, the difference between the new skylight here and the old skylight there. Over the 20 years that it's been exposed to the sun, um, everything that was protecting the fiberglass wore away. That's what you see. There's just the fiberglass that's exposed now, which is why we're having to replace this. So that's going well, and, and we're excited about how that's going, that it's going to be under budget and hopefully um, done early, which would be a fantastic thing. Uh, so people have also been asking about our returning to public masses. That is happening in Contra Costa County. We do not yet have the clearance here in Alameda County for public masses. I was hoping we'd maybe hear about that yesterday. I'm now thinking maybe next Tuesday we'll get some news. As soon as we know, we'll let you know. I expect when they tell us we can have public masses again, that'll be very much the same thing we did in June and July, and that is we'll be restricted to um, 100 people only in the church. Uh, we would go back to doing what we did then, uh, masses at 8, 10, and 12, reservations being made. We'll get that reservation system up and working again. But again, none of that's happening yet. Just to give you a heads up that hopefully, 
hopefully by the end of this month, we'll be at least gathering as kind of a community once more at St. Augustine Church to have some public masses. In the meantime, we will continue our webcasting of Sunday Mass at 10 and Masses on Monday through Friday at 1210. And that will continue even when we go back to public Masses. So everything we're doing, we will continue to do. We will just add the um, public Masses 8, 10, and 12 at St. Augustine when we get permission to do that. So stand by on that. Speaking of schedules, I wanted to share with you and invite you into a conversation that we've been having here, that parish leadership has been having for the last, I don't know, four to six weeks. And that is the conversation about when things return to normal, whenever that is, whatever a new normal might be, what do we want that to look like for us? Um, we are all in agreement that if we are to make a change in our mass schedule, this is the time to do it. This is the opportune time to do it. Because right now, after seven months, no one has a Sunday morning habit anymore in terms of, of coming to church. As a matter of fact, probably half or more of the views of our webcast mass happens after the webcast has ended. People are watching at their convenience, uh, whatever works for folks, and that's all cool and that's all great. But if we're going to change things up, this would be a great moment to do that when we come back. Some of the things we've been considering and having conversation with the staff and with pastor council about are all things that I shared with you before we went into shelter in place. Um, just to remind you some of the realities we're dealing with, and that is for more than the last eight years, our average attendance on a Sunday has been dropping. In um, 2019, that average dropped all the way to 2,777 people a weekend on average, which is less than the number of people who were coming to church when St. Elizabeth Seton was open. So we have two sites now, but, but fewer people coming. Um, one of the other things that entered into it is that uh, in September, when we did our liturgical ministry signups, we were hoping to have 1,000 people sign up to do ministries at Masses. Uh, that way, it wouldn't put too much pressure onto any group of people. Everyone could minister maybe once a month, and that would work out well. Well, when we asked for the thousand, the, the reality is that we had about 485 people sign up for masses. So less than half of the ministers we were hoping to have. So uh, dropping attendance for more than eight years, less than half the ministers that we were hoping to have to make our masses happen. And the other thing you may remember is that here in the Tri-Valley, there is a Korean community, the St. Paul Chung Catholic Korean community, who've been meeting for years. They have hundreds of members. They don't have a church. They've been meeting in a public space. They rent a school and they go there on the weekend. And they're, of course, looking for some place to have mass in a church. Some of their members, some of their children, have never had mass in a real church. And Bishop himself came to us, came to our pastoral council, and asked if there was a way that we could make some space for the Korean Catholic community. Uh, with a mass time on a Sunday morning, that would be a normal mass time not to like push them off and say, yeah, you can have two o'clock in the afternoon, but a time on Sunday morning when you might usually worship. And the fact of the matter is, we want to help them, of course, they're our brothers and sisters in Christ, but with our pre-COVID schedule, there was no way that we can squeeze them in to any place that we've got. So here's what we've been talking about. Nothing is in stone, and we would love your feedback, your ideas about it. There was some first emotional response, but once we got through that, we realize this might work, this might be what we need to do. And that would be this, that on Sundays, we would let the St. Paul Chiang Catholic community have Elizabeth Seton. That would be their worship space on Sundays. They would do Mass at 9 a.m. in Korean, and if they kept their current schedule, they would also offer a 10.30 a.m. Mass in English. So there would still be an English Mass at St. Elizabeth Seton for those who really like to worship in that space. They would also do daily Masses on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 9.30 in the morning. So that would be happening over there on Sundays. Our use of Seton would uh, then become funerals, weddings, other special events to schedule, things like a Christmas cantata or other events we might do, the Mass of Remembrance. And we would also, of course, continue to have daily Masses Monday through Friday at 12.10 there in the Seton Chapel we would move all our Sunday Masses over here to St. Augustine. And we would have, of course, confessions on Saturday, the 5 o'clock Saturday Mass, 8, 10, 12, 4, and 6, 
all here at St. Augustine. So we'd bring our entire community to this one location. In essence, what we do is we would go from eight masses on a weekend to six. That does not include the English mass that the Korean community also have available to us. Um, so there's still seven masses there, but we would be doing six all here. Um, there are some really wonderful benefits to that. Uh, there's a cost savings, we think. Um, Lynn T, our confirmation director, youth coordinator, has said that works brilliantly for the youth program because they meet on Sunday afternoons and they could just come from the hall to St. Augustine for mass, for the six o'clock mass, which works great. And in all honesty, my own personal observation has been this. I was here as an associate with Father Dan 19, 20 years ago when Seton was being built. And so I saw the community when we were in one place. And now 20 years later, I see the experience of the community with more masses, fewer people in two different sites. And my experience is, my own perspective is, that the experience of community, the sense of feeling belonging to community has been damaged by that. And I think if we all come back together in one place, that would be very helpful to building that. We're not getting rid of Seton at all. We will still be using it very much, just not on Sundays. And um, we will have it so that if, by God's grace and our effort, in three or five or eight years, our community starts to grow and bloom again, we can move some stuff back into that place. We'd have space to expand into. That's our thinking at the moment. Like I say, we've been talking four to six weeks. There's nothing in stone. And we'd love to get your feedback on that. Um, you can contact the pastoral council. It's really easy right here on our webpage. If you just go to contact us, the pastoral council drops right down. Click on pastoral council and you can email any of them. You can drop me an email if you would like with your, um, with your uh, thoughts, your ideas, how we might be able to deal with the fact that we've had you know, dropping attendance, fewer ministers, want to make some room for the Korean Catholic community. Um, we think this plan is going to work in meeting all those needs. Uh, so that's just what that's going on in terms of our thought process. Um, so that's where that's at. Uh, the other thing I wanted to make sure to ask you to do is uh, we're becoming more and more aware that we have members of our community who are unaware of everything that we're doing during the pandemic. We're getting phone calls from people saying, is there any chance I can get communion? It's been so long. I'm completely unaware that we're doing walk-through communion. People calling and saying, you know, are you guys doing mass? Yes, we're doing mass online. Wanting to know all sorts of other things that we are doing. Please share that information with them and invite them also under contact us. You can go to Flocknote and Flocknote is our email that we send out every Friday with all kinds of updates. Uh, this just walks you through how to sign up for Flocknote on your smartphone and on your PC. So take advantage of that. Just get the good news out about everything that we here at the Catholic Community Pleasanton are doing. So that's a longer update than normal, but there was lots to talk about. Uh, I look forward to seeing you maybe Wednesday on In Lieu of the Pew this coming Wednesday. Be happy to talk about any of this stuff then. You can send in some questions for In Lieu of the Pew. Again, thanks for your time, your attention. Uh, know that we miss you. We really do. It's not the same doing Mass in front of a camera as it is in front of a, an assembly of people who are praying with you. But we will continue to pray with you in God's spirit at distance as long as we need to. Know that you're in our prayers. We look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless, stay safe, stay healthy, and make sure you vote on November 3rd.